Now the problems they got now economically uh, it's got to so big and so magnified. General Motors, Ford and Chrysler is the three big three. America cannot let them go bankrupt. The immediate impact if General Motors or any one of the big three would take voluntary bankruptcy, there would be three and a half million people out of work within 24 hours. And it would be another 400,000 suppliers within two or three days. There would be 10 or 12,000 car dealerships go bankrupt because they cannot sustain themselves, can't even make their payroll. So I'm saying, I'm speaking for myself only, this country cannot afford to let any one of them go bankrupt. This money that the uh, government has loaned for, or I mean General Motors and Chrysler, right after they've gave away to the bankers and real estate, gave away $300 billion, give it to them, no strings attached. You see in the paper every day the repercussions of that. In the meantime, they loan the auto industry and they are threatened, they got to pay it back. If the government is smart, which are very few smart people down there, they would give this as an outright grant to the oil industry to survive. There's no way this country could survive by having four or five, six, seven million people added to the unemployment now. The rate for the country now is approximately seven percent total. And Michigan itself right now is ten or twelve unemployment rate as of today. So they better wake up, make sure the auto industry does not go under. And they, uh, the only way they, uh, to avoid using the word bankruptcy, they're going to have to use the words structured receivership and a czar to be appointed and look over their shoulders and how they operate. And they're going to have to do some real tight business practices. They're going to have to get realistic and make something people will buy. Right. I wanted to ask you a little bit more too. I mean, uh, back at the time of the sit down, you, so you and your brother had only been in, in the plant a couple for months. Four months. Four months. Okay, now let me tell you something at that point. I'm then. just curious as to was your father still working when my you, dad was working in plant 40? Okay. In the actual plant upstairs and the machines and the transmissions. But in the foundry, they had a, it was known as the old soldier zone. A lot of older people. Okay. And uh, the three or four hundred black people that worked the menial jobs. And the new hires all went into the foundry and then they went to the various plants as needed. So when they needed somebody to do the picketing and policing the place and cleaning them out, we got all the foremen out there immediately. And then Wayne and I, we had bushy tailed, glassy eyed, and we had the muscle. We encouraged the foreman to get outside and stay out. Don't Ever come back in and I'll tell you. So you that was your role during the strike as a strongman. That was my role. We were enforcers at that point. Okay. And we only told them once that was it. The plant was closed tight. Now Buick did not sit down inside. We made sure that the plant was cleaned out the first couple of days, and then each of the gates was manned. We allowed nobody in or out. We would not even let police or firemen in there. Period. We're going to get their attention real quick. Mm -hmm. We let the management people come in uh, after uh, two or three days to make the final checks for the week previous. Okay. That's it. Then they were invited to get out and stay out. What was the, the communication? Uh, uh, how did the, you know, if it started at, at Fisher and in the hole, you know. But we were all in, uh, in communications real good, all the plants. In meetings, uh, at breaks, at night. Uh, Flyers. I mean, how? What was the channels? Uh, uh, you know, how That's was it coordinated? How was it coordinated? Yeah, we had uh, regional organizers, had the Ruther Boys, for instance, and others. Uh, but uh, it was uh, very well thought out. We had leaders in each plant that was uh, union minded, and we all had the same goals to get out of this slavery system. Mm -hmm. What about the attitude of the community? I, I know oh, the attitude of the community? Yeah, and the oh, role okay. that they now, played. Uh, let's take Flint. This is where the big things was. Uh, the 
plants that were really militant was the South End Fisher and the uh, Chevy Fisher. Chevy in the hole. That was where they were inside the plants. All the other plants, we kept them out. We were not militant, but we enforced to hold the gates shut and we supported the uh, people in the plants. There were maybe uh, three, four thousand altogether. We don't have any count of how many people was at each of the plants, but it had to be maintained 24 hours a day. So the ones that were in the plant stayed in the plant. The food was brought to them to sustain them. Now down in the fish uh, shivy in the hole, uh, there was some in the plant. And they had a rough time there. And the um, uh, Michigan National Guard had machine guns on the corners of the south end uh, plant four at this roof corners, aimed down on the streets for the strikers were. And uh, this is what Governor Murphy figured out, boy, this is really dangerous. There's going to be some real high-class bloodshed immediately if we don't stop this. This is when he called it off. And that was the beginning of the end of the strike. It took them maybe 20 days to get it wound up and generally to get, come grudgingly to the table and talk. Mm -hmm. But I, I assume that some of the people in the community were... Oh, the community supported it very well. Mm -hmm. Now, the people in Flinters at that time, uh, I would guess uh, 40, 50,000, I'm just a guess how many was in the various plants at the time, 1936. And... Uh, the population was all General Moore's employees or families. So they wanted to do it better themselves. So we had real good support. Now, we had the grocery chain, Hamity Brothers. They fed a lot of the churches. They supplied them lots and lots of food for the, because they were the, they had 31 stores in the Flint area here mm -hmm. at one time before there was swindled out of it and bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Uh, by their son-in-law. I've heard a little bit about uh, that, yeah. I think he's in prison yet, I hope. Or shoveling coal for him. Right, right. <laughs> but but the, yeah, the, the, so support the, was, uh, the support was here, very good here in the Flint area. And the role of the wives and the, and the women, oh, obviously. Yes. Was oh, yes. The women's the one that did the picketing out there, mm -hmm. uh, outside the plants, along with the families. It worked out very well.